قوه الا بالله ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الاولين وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الاخرين وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الملا الاعلى الى يوم الدين we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering to make it a gathering of light a gathering of healing a gathering of beauty a gathering of elevation a gathering of beautification a gathering of forgiveness, a gathering of love, muhabba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his rahamat, his most divine blessings and mercies upon us, his fuyudat, his karamat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelop us in his grace and his mercy. And may he accept us all as his humble servants. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu feekum. I pray that everyone is doing well, inshallah ta'ala. So inshallah we're going to today actually do um, two hikam. However, the first one is really an extension of the last hikmah. That's why we're just going to go through it briefly. And then we will do the 99th hikmah. So 98 and 99 today, for those of you who've been following along. So the first one is, um, as Ibn Ata'illah rahimahullah wa nafa'an Allah bi ulumihi fi darayni amin says, An'ama alayka awwalan bil ijad wa thaniyan bi tawali al imdad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his first grace upon you, upon all of us, is existence. So he bestowed upon us first the grace of giving us existence. And then secondly, through the uninterrupted sustenance, bitawali al-imdad, the uninterrupted sustenance. So last time we spoke extensively about these, this notion of uh, imdad and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we exist fundamentally within the confines of these two essential mercies and blessings, which is the blessing of existence, i.e. being brought into existence, and then the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustaining us throughout this existence. So Ibn Atayullah is, is, is doing a type of rhetorical tool of now kind of ordering it. He's saying, so his first fundamental blessing upon you is obviously existence, and then the second blessing upon you is the uninterrupted sustenance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maintains us every nanosecond of our existence. In Surah Isra, verse number 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ العاجلة, لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمَ يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَنْحُورًا If anyone desires, barakallahu feekum, if anyone desires only the fleeting life, if anyone only desires the stuff of this dunya, then we speed up for, whatever, to, for them whatever we will in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will give this person whatever they want from the dunya. For whoever, for whoever we wish. So Allah will give whoever He wills from whatever He wishes. In the end, we have prepared torment for him to which to burn, disgraced and rejected. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا but if anyone desires the life to come and strives after it as he should, as a true believer, his striving will be truly thanked. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is verse number 20 in Surah uh, Al-Isra, كُلَّن نُمِدُّ هَؤُلَاءِ وَهَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانَ عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْظُورًا To both, those who desire the dunya and those who desire the akhirah, we will give both madad, numid. So we will give to both the latter and the former. We give some of your Lord's bounty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sustains and He gives everyone. The mushrik, the kafir, the asi, the mu'min, the muhsin, the mu'min, all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all categories of people. Those who desire the akhirah and those who desire the dunya. So you have to understand that subhanAllah, this, this, you know, this reality of al-madad al-ilahi, of divine sustenance, is a reality that is impressed upon every single one. So Allah is saying clearly, كُلَّن نُمِدُّ هَؤُلَاءِ وَهَؤُلَاءِ مِنْ عَطَاءِ رَبِّكَ وَمَا كَانُ, وما كان عَطَاءُ رَبِّكَ مَحْظُورًا And certainly your Lord's bounty is never restricted. So no one can restrict the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is destined to us. So this Hikmah 98, it kind of concludes Hikmah 97, which is essentializing this idea of the two blessings. The next wisdom that we have is wisdom number 99,
which is a little bit heavy. But inshallah, we'll get through it by the permission of Allah. He says, Ibn Ata'illah, rahimahullah, فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَّةِ Okay, pay attention with me closely. فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَّةِ You know what that means? Okay, we'll get there. وَوُرُودِ الْأَسْبَابِ مُذَكِّرَاتٌ لَكَ بِمَا خَفْيَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْهَا Did you get that? No. وَالْفَاقَةُ الذَّاتِيَّةُ لَا تَرْفَعُهَا الْعَوَارِضِ this hikmah reminds me of like sitting in Al Azhar. It's just like. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it sounds like Chinese. Faqatuka laka dhatiya. He says, Faqa means faqr. It's ashaddu alwan al faqr. It is the a most intense a version of impoverishment. So he's saying, Your impoverishment. Now, see the connection between the previous hikmah around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon us of ijad and imdad. And then it's almost as if he's kind of concluding with this meaning. He's saying, your impoverishment, i.e. your neediness, is a default reality within you. It's a default. I.e. that is your inherent state is one of neediness. A faqa, i.e. iftiqar. وَوُرُودِ الْأَسْبَابِ مذكرات لك بما خفي عليك منها أي من من فقتك meaning that when Allah subhanahu wa taala sends you all sorts of trials tribulations difficulties that challenge you right in your existence then these trials they remind you they are reminders مذكرات for that which you ignored of your impoverishment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends us all sorts of trials and tribulations and difficulties as reminders. Reminders of what? Of what you and I have forgotten about ourselves and that is our, our poverty, our, our indigence, our indigence, our neediness, etc. And then he says, to conclude the hikmah, وَالْفَاقَةُ الذَّاتِيَّةُ لَا تَرْفَعُهَا الْعَوَارِضِ And this inherent default state of a being an impoverished being is never lifted by any accidental realities. That nothing that may transpire for you in the dunya will ever lift you out of this state of neediness. So no matter what you get of the dunya, no matter how plump you become <laughs> with the dunya or by the dunya, you will never be lifted out of or removed from this default state of what? Of impoverishment. Now he's telling us, فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَ for a reason. He's telling us that our impoverished state is a default reality within us because it is any being, pay attention now, any being, that is brought into existence is by design huh, at the default state impoverished. The fact, the simple fact that you and I were brought into existence. Anyone here bring themselves into existence? No. So the default state of the human being is what? Is impoverishment. You cannot exit that state. If you brought yourself into existence, then you're ghani. But there's only one being that has that capacity, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ghani. He is need-free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no needs. We have needs. Not only do we have needs, no, our state, our default identity is as a needy being. So anything then that transpires beyond that point in our lives, where we become detached from Allah, forgetful, mindless, we feel strong, we feel independent, we feel capable, we have wind beneath our wings. What is that? What is that in terms of our essence? It's a delusional reality. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِي رَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمُ What has deluded you with your generous Lord? الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ فِي أَيِّ سُورَةٍ مَا شَاءَ رَكَّبَكَ What deludes you with your generous Lord? He is the one who created you and fashioned you made you upright, and in any form, he could have made us. So, فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَّةِ 
that tia means that it's inherent within you. It's your default state. وَوْرُودِ الْأَسْبَابِ مُذَكِّرَاتِ لَكَ بِمَا خَفِيَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْهَا مِنْهَا i.e. مِنْ فَقْرِكَ أَوْ فَاقَتِكَ so all of these realities now that Allah facilitates. Now you have to think about this. So here I'm, I'm brought into existence. My default state is neediness. But what transpires in life is I become, I start to develop. Right? The be, look at the child. The child is in the, the womb of the mother, comes out of the womb of the mother, starts to cry and scream, and then becomes immediately thoroughly entitled. Every child believes that they're so entitled and deserving of everything. And you have to, you know, you know, jump to their whims and desires. And how dare you not respond to my call. And I asked you if I can play a game. And I asked you for sweets. And I asked you for this. And you don't surrender to my will. Jabarut. <laughs> you know, this <laughs> a tyrant. Uh, immediately, we become tyrants on this earth. And, and think about it. Every coloring of our existence has this type of yin-yang reality or duality playing out, which is we have this sense of that we're growing, that we're capable, we own, we possess, we work hard, we cultivate, we grow, you know, we buy, purchase homes, cars, we develop careers, we think we know things. I studied for 20, 50, 30, 100 years, I have seven PhDs, I develop this sense that I may know something. All of that is, is a reality. But I'll give you a picture. Someone who, who's, built, who's built their career. And mashallah, the millions are flowing in. And they buy their most, you know, their dream home. And everything is amazing in the dunya. But then the child has an emergency at night. 1 a.m. They can't breathe properly. You jump into the car. You rush to the hospital. What are you doing at that point? You're sobbing. Like a baby, crying, Ya Allah, please, I beg you, my child. To where's your strength? Where's your power? Where's your wealth? Show me. Like, show me your home, your car, your bank account, your knowledge, your accolades. What is it? Where is it for you? Why is it not, why is it not taking care of you? Why are you so needy? Why are you begging Allah for support and help and relief? You know, that you would be ready and willing to do anything and everything for, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He would lift this burden from upon you. All my money, all my... Wallahi, you would not even... Every single thing that you possess, you would give so that you would have this one reality lifted from upon you. What does that tell you about yourself? We are beyond weak. We are beyond weak. We are nothing. <laughs> we are. We're nothing without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because once Allah wills that we come into existence, you see the language? It is a function of divine will. Allah willed your existence. What happens to us is we develop delusions of grandeur. We develop delusions of ability, delusions of strength. There's an illusory reality. I think I know, I think I have. There's this luxury that plays out, and especially now, like in our pop culture. When you talk about people who, f who, are, who are finding themselves, and looking for themselves, and defining their own journey of religion. You have people, Muslims, Muslims, who will say the following. Well, you know, journey, religion is my personal exploration of God. Religion is my personal exploration of God. It's, it, and it's, it's an it's a evolutionary reality. I uncover God as a reflection of me. In this deluded self-aggrandizing narrative where you're the center of existence and somehow you are meant to be the one finding God and uncovering the reality of the divine in accordance with your subjectivity because your subjectivity matters. Like I am a person and I have agency. And so therefore I... God reflects me and I reflect the reality of the divine, so I will... Un and you'll hear this, you'll hear people talking this, like, this way on the internet and all over the place. And all I want to say is like, this is the most delusional nonsense I've ever heard in my life. Who am I and who are you? We are 
We are not, you know, subhanAllah, I, I said this in classes before when I was teaching at Harvard Divinity School. So I was speaking about ubudiyah, the concept of servanthood. I was giving this long, elaborate explanation of it. And so at the end of my, you know, piece, the, a per, one of the students said to me, you know, I just, I guess my problem with everything that you're saying is that it's like all about servanthood. But where am I in all this? Like, where am, I, where am I, you know? I just, where's my, I have agency, and I have personhood, and I exist. And so, like, where am I in this discourse? I said, you're nowhere to be found. You're obsolete. You're not interesting. <laughs> you're not worth it. You don't need to be known. You know who, who is known and necessarily needs to be known? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I, there is zero need for our existence. We do not even need to be known. That's our true identity. That's why, فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَ That's your essence. So this narrative, this very luxurious, entitled narrative, where I am something. And the problem is, that this idea, this exact satanically inspired idea, is the idea that is running rampant in all of our spaces, in our homes, in our institutions, in our public sphere. What is the public sphere? Nothing other than a battle royale of nufus. Everyone claiming existence, personhood, identity. I should be known, I should be celebrated, I should be acknowledged, I should be able to be my unapologetic self, unrestricted. What is the public sphere other than that today? It is literally the most essential impulse that now, the satanic impulse that has become the standard. Everyone today, you come into your average household, it is about a husband and a wife, each of them talking about their selves, their wants, their dreams, their aspirations, what they see for themselves, who they want to be. Delusional discourses about somehow you think your life matters. Our life doesn't matter, by the way. And I'm not saying this in some morbid sense of like, you're worthless kind of discourse. No, you have worth, i.e. Allah created you. That's the extent of our worth. Then inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. The most dignified amongst you are those who are most conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have a basic primordial worth, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. And then you have the potential of worthy, becoming more and more worthy by what? By the extent of your taqwa, how conscious and mindful of Allah. But you're not worth it. You're not a person of worth and grandeur just because you're you. That's why, you know, this whole discourse around, tell me your individual story. Let me, I want to know about your story. My story is not relevant. My story is not important. It's about God. It's about Allah. Allah is the center of our existence. We are, if, if we come to terms, if humanity comes to terms with this hikmah, that your impoverishment and your neediness is inherently what you are, then things look very different for us as humanity. So he says, وُرُودُ الْأَسْبَابِ مُذَكِّرَاتٌ لَكَ بِمَا خَفْيَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْهَا So all of these trials and tribulations, what do they come and do? What do they do to you? Huh? They remind you. They put you in your place. They deflate the egos. Like I said, you can think you're the top of... You know, you can have the most followers on earth. You can be the person who's most praised on earth. Most acknowledged, most celebrated. You can have manipulated the entire political and economic system for your own individual interests and motivations. But one small bacterial virus or infection, you're done. You're done. You're nothing. You're on an oxygen tank trying to breathe. So why the delusion? Ibn Atayla is telling us, remember all of these, because we spoke last hikam, about how ijad and imdad, these are blessings. Well, when Allah reminds us of our essence, what is that? What is it? It's a blessing. When Allah, when Allah deflates you, and He brings you down, because you think, 
you know, our number one challenge, what's 99% of the problems that I experience that people come to me with? Why is this happening to me? I can't manage this. This is, you know, breaking me apart. I'm dying. I'm suffocating. Well, Allah is deflating you because we are all bloated. And this is my word that I use all the time. We're bloated. We have bloated nufus, bloated egos. And you know, bloating is not a nice thing. That's why I use bloated. Because bloating, you know, you just need to burp. <laughs> eat some ginger ale. Like that's what... We're all bloated, and, and, and it's ugly, and it feels nasty. But we don't... But here's the thing, is that Allah is sending us these waridat, trials, tribulations, difficulties, to deflate us. But we still struggle with being deflated. So Allah deflates us, we try to put like a bandage on it. No, 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 keep me... Allah wants to humble you. He wants to humble you as a blessing, to bring you back to your initial primordial state as... A faqir. No, I don't want to be a faqir. I'm powerful. I'm strong. This shouldn't be for me. I work too hard. People, people, do you know how many people come up to me with this exact line? Like, Sheikh, I've worked too hard for this. I've spent too many years doing this. How can I walk away from it? That's a, that's a, that's a massively delusional idea. You didn't do anything because you're nothing. <laughs> this idea, oh, I, I did too much and I worked too hard. And I put in too much time, and for God not to give me what I, you know, how can this not be? Because why do you think anything should be? You should not be. I've said this a thousand times. There's only one wajibul wujud. Who is wajibul wujud? Who necessarily must exist? Allah. Every single, kullu ma siwa Allah is Every reality or existent entity beyond Allah is Ja'iz. What does ja'iz mean? Permissible. Maybe, maybe not. So if your entire existence is ja'iz, is permissible, it's a possibility, then why do you think anything in your life must be? By the way, you don't, you're not, you're not, there's no must about you getting married, no must about you having children, no must about you being wealthy, no must about you having belongings, no must about you having cars and homes. There's no must in that. By now, I should have, people say. Because it's all an illusory reality. It's a delusion. Oh, I worked so hard. I went to school. I put in the hours. I did all my extracurriculars. You know, why am I not? There should, you, don't, you don't even need to exist. So why do you assume that you should have, you should, why do you want to be some? You know, subhanAllah, you know what the ulama say about Fir'aun? Something very interesting. What is Fir'aun's fundamental claim I am your high lord the ulama have a very interesting uh, reflection on, about why Fir'aun came to the point in his life where he said Ana do you know what it is they say that decades passed and he experienced no hardship decades pass and his wealth only is amassed greater and greater and he's able to enslave more and more people and his jabarutiya, his tyranny, just expands and extends beyond and beyond. So he reached a point where he believed, Ana rabbukum al like, <laughs> you know, I am your high lord. Now, we don't have one one hundredth of what Fir'aun has, but we're walking around in a Fir'aunic disposition. We are. We don't have one one, one, one thousandth of what he had, but we're walking around Knowingly or unknowingly with that disposition, that Fir'aunic disposition. A ha ana tha, I am. I am. When you, once you're saying I, وَتَنْتَصَرُ nafsik, and your intisar, your, your, what you struggle for and what you fight for is yourself, then you've lost the plot. That's why Ibn Atayullah is saying, your existence, the previous hikmah, your existence is a blessing. Imdad, so ijad, imdad. And every moment Allah sustains you. And your, your, your primordial default state is faqir, faqa, pure impoverishment. And then Allah sends you realities in your life to deflate you and bring you down, to remind you. So that, mudhakkiratun laka bima khafya alayka minha, to remind you. And then he says, وَالْفَاقَةُ الذَّاتِيَّةُ لَا تَرْفَعُهَا الْعَوَارِضِ this state that you have, this default disposition, 
as a faqir, as someone who has you know, this shadeed form, this intense form of neediness, لا ترفعها العوارض. What does that mean? What does it mean? I just said it. Tell me. I didn't even understand the English, but... Uh, you what? I didn't even understand the English. You don't understand? <laughs> He's like, I don't understand the Arabic or the English on that one. <laughs> والف... No, الفاقة الذاتية لا ترفعها العوارض. Huh? Your possessions don't do what? عوارض. Despite the عوارض. عوارض is a philosophical term indicating accidental realities that transpire. Because everything that happens to you is ac it's, it's from the accidental, not that it's by accident, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hasha does not do anything by accident. Accidental. Meaning that it's something that came into your existence without you. It's something that happened. Circumstances. No one can say for certain that what they possess is because they necessarily must possess this. No. I don't care what you degree you have or network you have. Everything you have is from purely the grace of Allah. So all of this for us is accidental. Arid. There's jawhar, there's essence, and there's awarid. Right, your jawhar is that you're a human being. Right? Haywanun natiq. And then you have accidental qualities, your skin color. Anyone choose their skin color? No. So why are we celebrating skin color? White, black, red, green. There's no celebration of skin color. It's an accidental quality. It's not it does not give you distinction. So people believe, oh, because I have a white complexion or a black complexion, or somewhere in the middle, that somehow I am a being of distinction. No, it's not. It's an accidental quality. Man ant. <laughs> I come from this village, or this tribe, or this land. All accidental qualities. But there's an assumption, no, that now somehow I have been elevated above. That's why caste systems develop. You look all across the world, you have caste systems. You have hierarchies, social hierarchies. The haves and the have-nots. The tale of two cities. All of this is what? People who believe that somehow they have been elevated out of the state of of faqa, of extreme impoverishment and neediness. But you're never lifted out of that state. That's what Ibn Atal is saying. This state of yours, your default primordial disposition as an absolutely impoverished and needy being never gets lifted. Even if you become head of state, People today, this is what happens. Why do you think nations fall and rise and fall? Nations fall every time, why? Because they believe they're above it. That they have manipulated, controlled, they have the resources and the abilities, that they are not like those others. We are not like those lands over there. No, we are impervious to harm, to this. It's, it's, it's delusional, it's, it's completely delusional. So nothing lifts, so you, may, you have to think this way. No matter how cushy your bank account is, no matter how comfortable your circumstances are, no matter if you've received every accolade that you want, you are always going to be what you are, which is a lowly, impoverished being. That's what you are. Don't ever get it wrong. The reason why we stumble and we struggle and we really experience so much harm Today is because we, are, we have not taken heed of this point. We don't. We don't take heed of it. I promise you, in a room like this, 99.9% .9 of our problems will come back to this. We have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten what we are. And that is what? Neediness, need, needy, nothings. That's what we are. You do that, you'll find a lot of relief in the dunya. <laughs> Because if you keep on expecting and assuming and having entitlement and I deserve and what should be and how come you have and I don't and you start to play this game of comparing and contrasting and what and should and all this discourse suffering, pain, anxiety, depression, suffering it's all coming from the same focal point liberate yourself of it that's why al-ghina, ghina nafs wealth is the wealth of the soul when you have why do you think the most honorific title that the Prophet ﷺ loved to possess was what? Abd, to be a servant. That's why when he was given the choice between prophecy, to be 
a prophet, a servant prophet, or a king prophet? Which one did he choose, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? To be a servant prophet. He didn't choose king prophet. He chose servant prophet because that is closer to the essence of his being, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, brothers and sisters, if you want, you want a truly re revolutionary idea. You know, t today people are talking about revolutionary concepts, anti-aging remedies. Everyone's talking about these big things, like how do you, you know, new ideas, download my course, and you'll become a billionaire after tomorrow. You can drop ship and I don't know what, and do virtual marketing and become a trizillionaire. Just sign up for my course. You don't need to sign up for any courses. You just need to open up the hikam of Ibn Ata'illah and become wealthy. Wallahi al I swear to you, Wallahi, as Allah is my witness, I'm not joking. It's right here. You don't need to go far and wide. You don't have to struggle. <laughs> you don't have to suffer. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be stressed out. You don't. All you have to do is come back to who you are. Deflate yourself. Remember your loneliness. Every, wake up every day with having no expectations except of what, that which Allah decrees. What is Allah going to decree for me today? If you want to know your status and your station, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established you. And that's what you are. That's what you're supposed to do. Today, I have a number of things that I have to negotiate. So today I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things I must do. I have to pray, I have to take care of my children, I have to take care of this, I have to serve that, I have to tend to my loved ones, I have to take care of my parents, I have to work, I have, I have a number of responsibilities I have to do. That's it. But you sit here, and then you develop a vision board of you're gonna be this magnificently wealthy, remarkable person. And you know what you're going to do with all that wealth? Guess what? Let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to help the Muslimin, right? Is that what you're going to do with the wealth? Nonsense. <laughs> no, you're not. You're going to give a fa'il khair or maybe like a $10,000, $20,000 check. And that's all you're going to do. That's compared to the wealth that you own and have and possess and what you can do with it. It's all dilute. It's Once again, it's a narrative. Narratives that we've, we've bought into about what we're going to do and how we're going to be. We have these big ideas about ourselves. Oh. By the way, nothing I'm saying is meant to say be a bum or don't be ambitious or don't work hard. No, a Muslim has to work hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ You have to work and you have to work very hard. You have to work hard at taking care of and raising your children. You have to work hard at you know, protecting your home and tending to the needs of your home. You have to work hard in serving your family. That takes hard work. You have to work hard at serving your community. You have to work very hard. But don't ever think that you're needed. Don't ever think that you're necessary. You know, I had someone close to me once. They were, uh, um, they had COVID. And they, were, they couldn't breathe. Like, you know, they were, they were having those like early on, like just, like maybe like a myocarditis before it was known to be a symptom of this. So they, they, could, like, they, just, they were like 2 a.m., they couldn't breathe, so they called me. They said, I cannot breathe. And I said, okay, what's, what, like, what are you concerned about? Well, my kids, like who's gonna take care of them? And my wife and my home and these things and my responsibilities, like who's gonna manage? Like, like death is kind of knocking at me and I'm feeling, I'm feeling really unsettled. I said, do you think for a moment that you took care of your children? Wallahi, not one day of your existence did you ever take care of your children. You never fed your child one day. You don't take care of your wife. You don't pay your bills. None of it. Allah does all of it. You're just... <laughs> you're being used for a reality. Your intention is to serve, but Allah feeds your children. So if your worry is about your children, I said just die in a relaxed state. Don't worry, just stop breathing and go away. <laughs> Beyond mutawakkal taban la shak. But in the in the words of Morpheus, do you think you're breathing when he told uh, when he told Neo? You guys know what I'm talking about. 
He told Neil, do you think that's air you're actually breathing? Like, I mean, do you think you're actually breathing? Trust me, there's not one breath that you're owed except that you're going to take it. Like, you know, you can, sometimes you have an anxiety attack or something. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. You think you're going to die. You're going to claustrophobic attack. You think you're going to die. No, you're not going to, you're going to die when Allah wills that you can't breathe anymore. Meaning that you're not even breathing for yourself. You are being breathed for. You are being given the capacity to breathe. So relax. If you just let it, if you let go, i.e. free your mind, <laughs> staying in the matrix, uh, then inshallah we will find a lot of khair in this dunya. And this dunya won't be some darkened reality. And wallahi the message, and I'll close with this, the message to myself, to all of you, and to the world around us, is really, beware of the narrative that makes you believe that you're special. Beware of it. Because what's running rampant in the public sphere that is really corroding the moral fabric of our society is this idea. I said, the shaitan believed that he was something and he was special. That he was not like Adam. That's why he believed, I am above that. Once you believe that about yourself, you become mal'oon, cursed. Shaitan, rajim, mal'oon, cursed. So there is a pathway of being cursed in this dunya. And it's this pathway. It's the pathway of thinking you're something. It's the pathway of assuming that you're not, you know, some needy, impoverished being. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the evils of ourselves, the whims of our, our wayward desires and our egos. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to embrace fully the disposition of what we are, which is fuqara ilallah. The Prophet ﷺ from his adi'i was Allahumma ahyini miskinan wahshurni fi zumratil masakin Ya Allah, allow me to live as a miskin, as a needy being and, and nestle me in the afterlife amongst the needy Allahumma ahshurni uh, Allahumma ahyini miskinan wahshurni fi zumratil masakin I wanted to recite these last verses from Surah Yunus that are very relevant to this topic and then we'll transition to the dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الدُّرُّ دَعَانَ لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى دُرٍ مَسَّهِ كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَا لِلْمُسْرِفِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when trouble befalls a person, he cries out to us, whether lying on their side, sitting or standing, so something bad happens, we yell out to Allah, Ya Allah, help me. We may be standing, sitting on our sides. But as soon as we relieve him of his trouble, he goes on his way as if he had never cried out to us to remove his trouble. That's the human being. Allah is telling us, Surah Yunus, verse number 12, what we're about. We will beg and cry, Ya Allah. How many people begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they pass their MCATs or their LSATs. Huh? Beg Ya Allah, please. Please, Ya Allah, just the MCATs. Just this one. Everything's riding on just this one step in my life. Okay, Sinan. Dr. Sinan, okay? I'm sure when you were trying to get the MCATs, everything was right on it. Can I ask you a question now in your ginger, tender, advanced age in life. Does it, did it really matter? Wallahi it didn't. Ask anyone, does it matter? Atif. Does it matter? Else, did it matter? The LSATs? Did it really matter? Did it make the, is your, has your life like, was everything really on that one degree to pass and you're gonna make it all? No. But we sat there begging Allah and here, it was a, it was a luxury by the way, MCATs, LSATs, these are all luxurious things. There's just, where it's first world problems that it's like the height of its manifestation but we think existence depends on it but even when Allah gifted did we move on as if we never needed Allah? absolutely unfortunately Allah is somewhere in the back but then something hurts Ya Allah please we lose Ya Allah please please Ya Allah and we are spoiled little brats and we keep on going back to Allah. One last time. Ashan Khatri. Ashan Khatri, Ya Rabbi. 
بليز فهمي مر كان لم يدعونا الى ضر مسح كذلك زين للمسرفين ما كانوا يعملون and, and in this way the deeds of such heedless people are made attractive to them may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us and allow us to be truly remem- full of remembrance for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may we always be re- reminded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with him to live by him to live for him ya allah we all collectively as this humble group of brothers and sisters who have gathered we all certify and identify and affirm categorically that we are in need of you ya allah all of us here ya allah we affirm categorically that we are your needy humble servants ya allah bestow your graces upon us be latif with us allahumma altuf bina idha ma jarat bina al maqadir ya allah be latif with us when the maqadir when the qadar comes our way be latif with us allahumma ameen allahumma ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sayyidina muhammad wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin